Hello guys, today I want to talk about seven of the most important features added in ES6. We are going to see ES5 code, then we're going to explain the change, actual change made in ES6, and then we're going to convert our ES5 code into ES6. These are the most important changes. There are um, others also, but I, ch I have chosen them as the most commonly used changes and what you need to consider when you are about to migrate your code from ES5 to ES6. I'm so excited, let's start. Number one change is variable declaration. There has been added um, two keywords, let and const in ES6, which gives us possibility to declare variables, variables in a different way. Okay, var a, let b, add and const c. What are the major changes? First of all, uh, if you are familiar about hoisting, you know that there exist some problems when declaring a variable, uh, variable with var keyword. Declaring a variable with a let keyword fixes this problem. Let's look at the following example. We have a variable my location, which is a default location, and then I have a function get location, which takes the IP calculates uh, the location based on the IP and return this location. And if the uh, location was, if the IP wasn't given, uh, then it just, the purpose is to return the default location, okay? So let's observe the code. So this takes the IP. If IP is not given, then we are uh, returning my location, which maybe you think that is this default. But this is the number one problem of hoisting. Actually, if we print this, the result will be undefined. And the reason is that the variable my location declared on line 4 with var keyword actually was hoisted and was declared, was converted like this. And obviously, the if condition wasn't satisfied and undefined was returned from the my location function. Declaring a variable with let keyword fixes this problem. And if I write here let my location, this will return default. Here, uh, my location was not hoisted. It was not even declared because if condition wasn't satisfied, and that's why it returned the default location. The difference between declaring a variable with let and const is that when you declare a variable with cost, you cannot actually reassign value to it. You, cannot, you can actually modify the declared variable if it's an array. You can push the elements to the array. You can uh, change the object if you declare a variable with const. Um, and if it's an object, you can change actually this object, but you cannot reassign the value. And let's see it in action. Uh, const array is an array and I can push the RL elements. Push one and print my array. And I see that I have only one element in my array. But if I try to reassign value, like array is new array, then I've got a problem. I have an error. And the error says that assignment to constant variable. Okay, I, I hope I, you understand uh, the actual difference between var and let and const keywords. And when you are about to migrate your code uh, from ES5 to ES6, please consider that uh, variables declared with var keyword are hoisted. They have function scope. They don't have block scope. But variables declared with let keyword or const keyword has block scope. They exist in if statement, in uh, for loops, and they even exist in explicit blocks. And let's see also it in action. I can create an explicit uh, scope here and declare a var variable with var. var a equals 15. Excuse me. And then I can print my var a right here. Uh, a. Okay. So I can run the code and 15 is printed. If I change my uh, var with let or const keyword, I have an error. 
A is not defined, okay? Uh, we have just created explicit scope, and because of this scope, uh, lit was created right here and was died right here, so it doesn't exist on line 5. Okay, let's move on on the second uh, major change in ES6, and that's default parameters. Default parameters, actually, there were major changes done in parameters. Uh, now we have in ES6 default parameters, we have um, named parameters, and we have possibility to get the rest of the parameters also. We're going to explain all of them step by step. Let's say that I have a function multiply which takes two numbers a and b. And the logic is the following, that if b was not given, I want to take the b um, as a 1. So actually when I execute the function, uh, multiply and I give 5 and I don't give the second argument, this should print 5. Okay, this prints 5. And right now I have the logic that if b is undefined, um, use 1. So I could write it like this, if b or, or 1, but that's not quite true because if I give 0, b uh, is considered as a falsable value, so it would take uh, still 1, which is actually wrong, right? So if you multiply 5 to 0, you need to have 0, not, not 1, uh, not 5, excuse me. So this is considered uh, to be 5, so I, I think that this is more correct way. Anyway, um, this can be really easily done in ES6. I can just write here b equals to 1, and I can completely delete this line. Okay, so now when I run, run this code, I have, uh, I have uh, 5. Um, if I want to have a, a default value of a, for example, so if I don't give the second argument, uh, I want that to the, my multiply function to return actually the square um, of, the, uh, of the a, right? So I will write here b equals to a, and my function will return 25. And I can have these default values on all the parameters like a equals to, for example, 1, and b equals to 1, and if I uh, don't give even the first argument, this will return just 1. It doesn't throw an error, okay? Okay, and if I give um, 5 and 0, as I did in ES5 version, this will give me 0, because uh, actually b argument was given as a 0, okay? Okay, let's stop, talk about named arguments. Okay, look at the following example. I have a function select users which, which takes options. And the options are like start and limit and sort parameters. So if I have a lot of users, I want to select them with pagination, right? So I give these options, and then if my options wasn't given, I take uh, as an empty object, and then I take the start, limit, and sort on line three, four, and five uh, like this. If start doesn't exist, consider it as a zero, if limit doesn't exist, consider it 20, and so on. I hope this code is really clear for you. Now I'm going to change this code into ES6 version, and you will see the magic of ES6. Here I will uh, take the object notation, and I will write here, my start should be zero, my limit should be 20, and my sort should be email. Uh, my mistake is here that I don't need columns, I need equal signs. Okay, so this is a notation uh, of ES6 where I take an object and from this object I take start, limit, and sort arguments. Okay, let's call my select users and give their an object. Uh, you see that I uh, haven't given any properties in the object, no, not start, limit, and sort. So right now, when I execute the code and I print these three arguments, I see that it prints uh, 0, 20, and email. If I give here start equals to 10, for example, 
then I've got 1020 and email. Um, if I don't give the object here, I will have an error. Right? Cannot destructure property start of undefined. Um, the problem can be easily solved if I do like this. So I want to destructure this object and take start limit and sort from this object, but the problem actually is that I don't have this object. Uh, undefined was given instead of this object. So I do hear that if undefined is given instead of this object, I take it as an empty object. And then uh, the engine tries to take the start limit and sort from this empty object, and if uh, actually the start limit and sort properties doesn't exist in this object, they are taken as 0, 20 and email. So I can take here, uh, uh, give the start equals to 10, for example, and if nothing is given, start will be 10, but that makes things much more complicated. So I think you shouldn't do this. Just put it here, 10 if you want start to be 10, okay? And just reassign an empty object if the, just to, just to handle the uh, giving the undefined. Okay, uh, that's the second case of changes in, in the ES6 regarding arguments. And let's talk about the rest of the arguments. Okay, I have a really simple function test which takes x and y arguments. And let's imagine that I, um, I'm going to expect additional arguments to this function which I want to handle additionally, right? So I'm going to declare, this is an ES5 version actually. Uh, var others is uh, array prototype slice call on arguments and the arguments keyword returns actually all of the given arguments. And what this line actually does is that it takes out first two arguments from the arguments keyword and returns new array and the array is actually the rest of the arguments. So if I call right now test and give just one, two, three, four and five, this will print three, four and five because they are others. X is one, Y is two and the others are three, four and five. How can this be done in ES6 with just single word? Three dots and others. And I'm going to remove this line completely. It does exactly the same thing. Okay, let's talk about spread keyword. Actually, spread keyword is the reverse of the rest keyword. The rest keyword uh, it's not the actual keyword, rest argument. So this is called rest argument. And the, re the spread uh, operator actually does the reverse. So if I have an um, array right here, or others is three, four, and five, I can give these three, four, and five as the other arguments when I am executing my test. others. And it does exactly the same thing. I take out arguments from the, uh, from the array and I, actually I take out the elements from the array and pass it as an arguments. Okay? Uh, the equivalent way in ES5 is to again call apply on test give this keyword, which maybe is undefined at this point because we don't care about it, and we can give array of arguments like one and two, and if I have others, why did I delete it? Uh, excuse me, others is three, four, and five. I need to call concat right here, give these others. And this is the equivalent way of the spread keyword in ES5. Uh, okay, um, let's talk about the uh, third major change, and this is uh, arrow functions. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of examples on arrow functions because I think that's really important and really convenient change in ES6. Okay, let's look at the following example. I have an object application object which has debug true, 
and I have an init method on this object, I'm selecting a button, adding an event listener, and when this button uh, is clicked, actually, I want to print my uh, debug value. Okay, if I do like print this debug, this won't work because this keyword is used inside a function. And this keyword right here will be an object. It will be a DOM object. Actually, it will be a button. The workaround in ES5 was that you declare a new variable, a variable like var that equals this or var underscore this equals this or as you like, there are many approaches. I was doing like var me equals this and then you can print right here me debug which will be the actual debug property of the, of the object, it will be true. Um, in ES6 there is much easier way of doing this. You don't need actually this var me equals this and instead you can use arrow function instead of normal function in a button event listener. And here in my event listener I can directly write this debug instead of me debug. And that's, that's really convenient, right? The second example is when we use arrow functions as a callback functions. That makes things much more easier. Um, in the following example, I'm using map uh, method uh, of the array, and I, I'm using this callback function, normal function, and returning just the uh, square of the egg, right? So if I print right now square numbers, it will be 2, 4, 9, and so on. Uh, there is, uh, using arrow functions, actually, I can do like this. Except n, and just n multiplied on n without return or without additional braces. So, basically, this is explicit return. Whatever is written right here, if I write here 5, it will be returned. So my square numbers will be five, 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 uh, eight times, right? So uh, if I want to return, actually this is the equivalent of the previous one. And the next example I want to give you about arrow functions is about nesting arrow functions. If I have a multiply function which uh, returns another function and the nested function returns again one more function and I need to execute this like uh, multiply one on two, excuse me, one on two, and this I want to multiply on three. And this will finally give me six, right? Uh, now let me convert this into arrow function. I'm going to remove this function keyword, I'm going to remove parentheses, and the parentheses can be removed when you have a single argument. So I'm, I'm accepting single argument in all my functions so I can remove parentheses. Um, I am uh, accepting a as an argument and I'm returning new function. So I can do like this. And here again I can remove the parentheses and function keyword and return like this. So that's the, that will do the same thing. That's it. But I can even simplify this. So if I remove the braces right here and here, and remove this return, this is considered as an explicit return, right? So it will just print uh, 6 again. And I can do the same thing right here, remove the braces and remove the return keyword, again explicit return, and do the same thing right here. And let's see, this still prints 6. And if I print this in a single line, that will make our life much more easier because the code maybe it's not readable but it's really simple and as soon as you get used to arrow functions it will get readable I'm sure. And that's still six. The number fourth thing I want to talk about is string interpolation. Look at the following ES5 code example. I've got domain, port and ID variables and I want to uh, structure a URL using this domain port and ID. This is how I do generally in ES5. And let's look at the ES6 example. I declare a variable with either const or let, and I use the backticks, and basically I write the string there, 
and here I use dollar sign braces and inside these braces I use the variables domain colon then port variable then API users and again variable ID this is the ES6 version I think it's much more readable and uh, even smaller we don't have to use this concatenation sign plus okay uh, the second advantage of uh, using the uh, template uh, literals in ES6 is that it makes our life much more easier when we work with multi-line strings imagine how you would do ES5 code if you want to uh, have a HTML structure in your variable so you have their HTML body and so on in different line let's see simple example of multi-line string in ES5 and let's convert it into ES6 uh, I have a paragraph and uh, there are two ways basically to uh, declare multi-line strings in ES5 either you need to have two strings like this uh, and this is a new line symbol of course and you concatenate these two strings or you have them uh, on a new line with this backslash so in ES6 you do like this so you use again these backticks um, and you have uh, paragraphs you don't need to put there any slash n or slash just and you can as you can have as many new lines you want and this is multi-line string okay number five fifth thing is uh, destructuring of arrays and objects this is an ES5 code where my function returns an array of two numbers and I need both of the numbers in the separate variables I take the first one and save in number one I take the second one and save in number two how would I do this in ES6? In ES6, I can do, I can replace this with uh, either again either const or let, but I use here number one and number two in array notation, which actually means that uh, get numbers will return an array, take the first number, first element of the array, and save in the number one take the second element of the array and save in number two that's it that's all so we have number one and number two as 10 and 20 uh, excuse me number one and number two let's print 10 and 20 perfect um, we can do the similar thing with objects actually I can return object from the get numbers and do a similar thing there okay let's let, let me convert this code like I'm returning an object where a is 20, uh, 10 and b is 20 and here I want to take the do the same thing basically so how would I do this in ES5 uh, I would create new variable here like numbers and number one equals to numbers dot a number two equals to numbers dot b but I would do it differently in ES6 um, instead of array notation I use here object notation of course and I say that um, first of all I can say that I can declare a and b variables right here also a comma b and now my a and b variables are available right here they are 10 and 20 but what if I want to call my a and b number one and number two then I say that a corresponds to local number one and B corresponds to local number two and instead of A and B I print here number one and number two which creates number one and number two vari variables and assigns A and B them that's it 10 and 20 okay the next thing I want to talk about is enhanced object properties and what does this actually mean I have an object right here for O equals an object and but before this I want to declare X equals to 5 and var Y equals to 6 and I want to give uh, the X and Y properties to my O object um, assigning 5 and 6 correspondingly so I would do it like X corresponds to X 
and y corresponds to y. And when I print my O object, it gives me an object where it has six. Uh, it has x equals, equals to uh, five and y equals to six. Um, okay, how would I do this in ES6? Uh, I don't need actually this x, second x and y at all. And this does the same thing. Okay, I'm not gonna explain this because I think it's really obvious. Um, the next thing about the object properties, enhanced object properties, is uh, the computed properties. So if I want to have a computed property on an object in ES5, I would do like this. Uh, for example, math random property equals to 10. And let's print my O object, and there's this random property which uh, corresponds to uh, 10. In ES6, I can do this directly in object declaration, in brackets. Math random corresponds to 10. And that's it. The same thing. Okay? And about methods. What if I have a method get sum in ES5, which looks like this? And it returns the x plus y. And if I call get sum, this will print obviously 11. Okay? In ES6, I can completely remove this function keyword and the colon, and that's it. That's basically all. Okay, last and I think the most important thing and the most major change was ES6 classes. Actually, there was uh, no def definition of class in ES5. There were constructor functions. And let's create this constructor function. Uh, and let me do like this. I don't want to delete my ES5 code. I want to compare it, so I'm going to do it like this. Function apple, which has two arguments, weight and color. And I save them in, a, um, in its public variables. Okay? And now let's say that I want to add a new prototype method, for example, which just returns the weight. So I would do like apple prototype get weight equals function and this returns this weight. And let me create an instance of apple. Var apple is new apple. Give like 200 gram, for example. And color is green. Okay, now let's print get weight. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this in the console log. And it prints this 200. Okay, now let's see the corresponding way in ES6. I declare a class with class keyword, class apple. In its constructor, I take uh, weight and color. And the assignment of public variables is basically the same. But about assigning, uh, creating a prototype method get weight is much simpler. I write get weight right here, uh, which will return this weight. Okay, uh, and let me comment. Let me take this code and put it below, and comment this code. Okay, so this will do the same thing. It prints two hundred. Okay, what happens if I want to use getters and setters in ES5 and how can it be done in ES6? In ES6 it's really, really super simple, I think. So I can just write get, for example, weight um, kg, for example, if I want to uh, get the weight in kilogram or I like kg weight, um, which returns this weight divided on 1000, okay? Now, uh, I can just write kg weight right here, and this will give me 0.2, which is uh, how many kilogram is 200 gram, right? Uh, how would I do this in ES5? It's, I think, really big overhead and 
um, it's pain in my opinion doing this in ES5. So you have to call object define property. Uh, I want to do this on Apple prototype. I want to call the property TJ weight and then object. And inside object, I say that get corresponds to a function this weight divided on thousand. And I want to return this. Uh, as for set, something similar. It takes the key kg weight as an argument and this weight equals to kg weight multiplied uh, on thousand. And now, let me comment the ES6 version um, and see the same thing. It prints this uh, to, uh, 0.2, which is a number in kilograms, which is quite right. Now let's reassign if kg weight is 0.4, for example. And after this, I want to print um, apple weight, which will be 400 gram, right? So uh, this is how it can be done in ES, um, ES5, which is really not convenient and hard to remember. Um, in any case, I think the ES6 version is uh, better, right? So let me comment this and see the same thing in ES6. Uh, for set kg weight, it takes the kg weight as an argument and this weight is kg weight multiplied on 1000. And that's it, we have the same output. 0.2 in kg weight and 400 in weight. As far as this is the, um, this is not the uh, in detail guide, uh, there are much more on classes. So um, I really encourage you to read more about this. Um, I do have a separate video on this, but um, it's really, I think, um, outdated and to be honest, not the best video. Um, so um, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a separate crash course for um, object-oriented programming in ES, ES6. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover um, also some scenarios in ES5. Uh, but that's, that's it basically for now. Uh, you can extend, if you have an, another class, you can just extend uh, some fruit class, for example, and you can take some general properties and methods uh, from the fruit class. If you want to uh, call the fruit constructor, you just write super, um, but be consider that the super, calling the super, must be the first thing you are doing. So it should be the first thing in the constructor. Okay, I think that's all. Um, that's the basically end of the video. Thank you really much for watching it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out my GitHub and Facebook. Thanks for watching and see you in the next time.